Like any long-running franchise, Scooby-Doo has seen so many different iterations and interpretations. This lore is more dense than people care to admit, but that's mostly because people don't care. While many of the Scooby-Doo shows stick to the status quo and continue to provide the formula that many people have grown to love or totally sick of, there are quite a few entertainingly interesting entries in the series. I've already talked about how much I love the more grounded feeling of the early straight to VHS films, but I also love Scooby-Doo as a wacky cartoon. I'm the kind of scuber who wants everything from the Doober. Give me dark, give me silly, give me a grounded reality, but also unrealistic and zany, and give me something genuinely fun. And on all fronts, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated seems to deliver. Imagine a Scooby-Doo where you actually care about the characters, one that is thoughtfully funny, and one where you're dying to watch the next episode. I don't know how they did it, but they did. So it turns out my favorite genre is uh, two season small town mysteries. I really like the ones that have red curtains and zigzag floors. I didn't watch Mystery Inc. when it was first on. I didn't check it out until recently when it was recommended to me by my girlfriend. I watched it. And it's the show responsible for sending me down this Scooby-Doo rabbit hole that I am desperately ready to get out of. So let's take a look at the Scooby series that has made me expect and want so much more from the franchise. And, uh, jinkies. Before we continue, today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. With more than 10 million players worldwide, the brand new free collection RPG game Raid Shadow Legends has taken the mobile gaming market by storm. With 300,000 reviews on the Google Play Store, Raid has almost a perfect score. And with over 400 champions ranging from orcs, knights, elves, and more, you can assemble a great team from 16 heroic factions. And you can customize their artifacts to create a unique mystery build for each one. This makes PvP gameplay interesting for those who want to claim glory, but if you're more into single player, there's a fully voiced story campaign. And the anticipated new Faction Wars feature is now live. If you download the game using my link in the description, you get tons of free bonuses. And for new players, you'll get 100,000 silver, one free energy refill, one day XP boost, plus one free champion. And you get daily login rewards for the first 90 days. So get started and click the link below to download Raid Shadow Le That's the wrong chord. Uh, Raid Shadow Legends. I've kind of separated the Scooby franchise into two eras. The original era and the post Hanna barbera Time Warner acquisition revival era. I characterize the revival era as having a level of self-awareness and winks to the audience like, holy sh**. Velma lost her glasses? She sure does that a lot, doesn't she? Wink, wink, wink. It's to the point of parody. This awareness always translated to the finished product in a very shallow way. It wasn't evolving the formula, it was just aware of the formula. No matter how many times they put a spin on the phrase meddling kids, they were still just saying meddling kids. And while there is a place for that, there's nothing inherently interesting about it. When the third revival era Scooby series was getting into production, the creative team, made up of Mitch Watson, Spike Brandt, and Tony Cervone, wanted to take Scooby-Doo and put it under a microscope. Only things directly addressed in the original series are kept in, meaning they were given free range to put the characters in a new setting, change their ages to be closer to one another, and ignore other things they may not want to address. Look away, Daphne. We all promised each other that we would never speak of him. Not ever. It took the concept of four teenagers and their talking dog going around solving mysteries, broke it down, and built it back up in a more emotionally grounded reality. However, it also celebrates the true absurdity of the concept. It takes the best parts of Scooby-Doo and makes them better. Mystery Inc. premiered on April 5th, 2010, and a lot of people didn't really know what to think of it at first. They felt that the new spins on the characters were a little strange and their interpersonal relationships were a little too But as time has gone on, more and more people have discovered it and more and more people have realized that it's incredible. The show takes place in the early days of the gang as they're still hanging around their hometown, Crystal Cove. This isn't an origin story, but they haven't been solving mysteries for super long. Their traps fail, they actually go to high school, and their parents are questioning their strange obsession with solving mysteries and catching bad guys. We're just solving mysteries. All the kids are doing it. No, they're not. While each episode usually features a monster of the week to capture, the monsters are actually a beloved part 
of the Crystal Cove community, and a big draw for tourists. So their mystery solving is often discouraged by the town's authorities because it's seen as bad for business even when the monsters are interrupting business. Alongside this is an overarching series-long mystery involving the history of the town, a real paranormal threat, and another group called Mystery Incorporated who solved mysteries 20 years before our gang. What's new Scooby-Doo the series we're looking at next is kind of a respectful parody of Scooby-Doo. Like, oh god, Velma losing her glasses? That's never happened! It explores the characters horizontally, it adds new character traits in order to create new one-off jokes newer than the original versions, but it's not really interested in exploring the characters. However, Mystery Inc. explores the characters vertically. It expands on the traits you already know and love and grounds them a little bit more. It rises above the series' tropes to explore them more interesting. In fact, a lot of the familiar phrases you want to hear only show up once throughout the entire series, so when they choose to use it, it has a big impact. Oh, like Scooby -Doo. For the first time ever, a lot of the show's focus is put on Fred. He's kind of the primary protagonist in the show, and he is so much more interesting than he has ever been. He's beyond dedicated to solving mysteries and his friends, almost to the point of a blissful delusion. You know, Shag, when we all graduate from high school and move in together, we can get a room just like this. He's also obsessed with the construction and history of trap making. To an absurd point of obsession. Of course he is! I mean, how else would he do what he did in the original series? His Rube Goldberg traps are as elaborate as they've ever been and wildly creative. While this may seem very out there, the way it affects his relationships would be the same for any obsession he could have. This is just fun. He may even be my favorite character. He's just so silly and sweet and a total goober. Daphne is kind of the black sheep in her family. She's still loved, but her sisters are super successful and she's just not there yet. Before the series begins, she realizes she has feelings for Fred, but Fred is in his own awkward, emotionally distant man world to recognize her as a romantic interest. Could be a clue. Good work, Daphne. Thanks, Fred. You're so sweet. <laughs> But she's not a pushover. She gets fed up with Fred, and when she's treated unfairly, she doesn't put up with anyone's sh She pushes back. She's also very useful within the group itself. At the beginning of the series, Shaggy and Velma are dating, secretly. Velma, being as smart as she is, gets frustrated with Shaggy's unhealthy diet, his slacker carefree attitude, and his inability to tell the gang, specifically Scooby, about their relationship. Velma has a very short fuse, like a lot of gifted teenagers do. She's fed up and hasn't yet developed the patience to deal with people in a more appropriate manner. Shaggy and Scooby are a lot less fearful here. While they are scared in the beginning of the series, getting over their fear is a part of their character arc. And then there's Scooby. Scooby has always been my least favorite part of Scooby-Doo. While he's fun and can be cute, I feel like they lean on him a little too heavily for the comedy. But Mystery Incorporated makes him cuter and balances the comedy with the new versions of the characters who all offer a different style of humor. When he's scared, he doesn't just run away, but he ducks and hides and calls out for Shaggy's help. I kind of get upset when I see Scooby in danger because I just keep thinking about my own pet. He's also smarter. At first, he's kind of worried about his perception as a sidekick, because Velma calls him that out of frustration, but he actually contributes to the team. Although I like this iteration more, I do have trouble buying into Scooby's more sincere moments, because at the end of the day, he's still just Scooby-Doo, and it's harder to see him as a unique character. That's not the show's fault, however. My favorite episode in the entire series, and my recommendation if you want to watch just one episode, is the Mystery Solvers Club State Finals. Gearing up for said competition, Scooby gets sick and has a fever dream where he and the mascots from all of the other Teenage Mystery Hanna-Barbera shows have to solve a mystery together. It's a great throwback, but it's also hilarious and super cute. I love these characters. Their relationships are messy. I find myself being frustrated by their choices. They're interesting. This is Scooby-Doo. They're not supposed to be interesting. It examines their one notedness through the lens of their relationships with one another, both platonic and romantic. Everything here feels sincere, even down to the performances. This is the first time Matthew Lillard voiced Shaggy for a cartoon, and the cast recorded together, so I hear levels of emotional depth I'm not used to hearing from these characters. The Scooby series since, like, episode one has always used their age as a marketing tool. 
they're teenagers because young kids think teenagers are cool. But here, it's teenagers through an adult's perspective, but it respects the teenage struggle. They get in trouble with their parents, and it's narratively dramatic and ends up having real consequences in the show. They call their parents for help when they need it. They make bad choices, and they are... Other Scooby shows had irregularly appearing characters, but Mystery Incorporated has an entire ensemble. The families of the kids, their other friends, and the other adult authority figures in their lives are prominent. Having other recurring characters keeps things fun, but even they grow and develop throughout the show. I love Fred's dad, the mayor, Sheriff Bronson Stone, played so appropriately by Patrick Warburton. Starting to smell a little... Funky. Hot Dog Water, the once bullied schoolgirl who ends up having a very close and also relationship with Velma, and Angel Dynamite, the only adult the group trusts who may be hiding something of her own. Tonally, it's a great mix between the absurd and silly and eerie and creepy. Most of the series is still Monster of the Week episodes, which can be enjoyed on their own. A lot of the plot is moved forward through stingers towards the end of the episode. However, this isn't a bad thing, as even the non-plot connected parts of the show are incredibly entertaining. While the Monster Mayhem is pretty close to the original formula, it always goes off the rails. I guess Everyone in Crystal Cove has an amazing budget and an amazing set of craft skills because up until the unmasking and explanation, these monsters have the real presence and abilities of whatever they're imitating. It's like every time they go into the explanation, I'm just kind of like rolling my eyes because I'm like, yeah, right. I love it. They're so imaginative and weird. Also, my emojis? And for the first time ever, the actual chases are really exciting. They play with lighting a lot, action is fun, and there are stakes. With recurring characters appearing, sometimes we get the treat of actually recognizing and knowing the character behind the mask. It's a fun twist that only works within a show with such a large ensemble. It makes the episodic format feel more interconnected, without diving too in the serialization of it. The production quality here is top notch. There's amazing color design, outfit design, lighting, camera direction, and music, which all come together to create a genuinely creepy atmosphere and aesthetic. Or just atmosphere, but I'll never pass on an opportunity to say aesthetic. And speaking of aesthetic, this show's character designs were all made by cult favorite character designer, Derek J. Wyatt. All right, I'm getting kind of sleepy. I'm gonna pass this one off to a comic slash trailer slash inevitable food reviewer Drake for a second. All right, I'll be I'll be right back. Trip the fans. Thanks, Billy. Enjoy your nap. Derek J. Wyatt is known for his stylized, kind of angular designs. He's worked on Transformers Animated, Ben 10 Omniverse, and of course, Mystery Incorporated. Plus, his monster designs are top tier. They do come off feeling a bit like Ben 10, but this is the first time since the original series that the Scooby-Doo Rogues Gallery has been updated with some more memorable characters. Crybaby Clown, the Freak of Crystal Cove, the Obliteratrix. Why would Obliteratrix, oh, whatever her name is. They're cool, but also kind of scary when they need to be. I hope that helps because I gotta get back to my channel to talk about Scooby Apocalypse. You can feel free to join me if you want, but uh, yeah, good luck with the rest of the video, Billy. Serialization totally benefits Scooby-Doo. I eventually got really bored with the other two Scooby shows I chose to watch this year. While Mystery Incorporated does choose to go with a very easy to guess formula for the whodunit aspect, it keeps you engaged over a longer period of time by giving you pieces to the whole puzzle separately. I wasn't intending on reviewing Mystery Incorporated, so I didn't take notes, so I had to go back and watch a lot of episodes, and going back and understanding where the show is going is awesome. Its entire story was planned out right from the beginning, so the characters' arcs are complemented by the story really well. Then out of nowhere, big story moments will happen and will leave your jaw on the floor. One, because they shock you, and two, because this is f***ing Scooby-Doo. Like, what? I'm invested? The season one finale especially has major consequences for the characters that continue to alter them and their relationships until the end of the series. The second season of the show starts off at a low point for the group. They have to work through a lot of their issues with each other before they can go back to doing what they do. And just like all of these two season mystery shows, the bigger plot doesn't really get moving until the second half. The later episodes are really plot heavy and they're insane. I heard the basic premise of how the show goes off the rails and I was super 
super into it. But after the lore started getting explained within the show itself, I was kind of not about it. I felt like it was a little too grand for Scooby-Doo. It also addressed questions I didn't want answers to. However, I ended up holding off on watching the last few episodes, but I came back and rewatched them and I loved it. I felt that way about a lot of Mystery Incorporated. Some of it is off-putting, especially when the Scooby brand has been viewed so narrowly for so long that breaking out and actually doing something interesting is kind of a challenge to initially get over. I think that's the series strong point though. The show ends on a simple, but somewhat beautiful sentimental note, and I wanted to rewatch it immediately. It's not just a shallow view of the series. It's one that has looked inside and out and has considered and reconsidered its source material, and that's so impressive because it's f***ing Scooby-Doo. It's one of the most simple shows out there. But it asks, what is the horror aesthetic? Who are these teenage characters and what is a mystery as it stands on its own and not how it relates to Scooby-Doo. It's a really cool reminder that really basic ideas can be radically different depending on who's making it and depending on whether or not they're willing to challenge the status quo. And that's a good thing because Scooby-Doo invented the status quo. Oh no, I can't see without my glasses. So anyways, thank you for watching this video. If this is your first video of mine, check out the other Scooby videos, subscribe, follow me on social media. I'm genuinely tired. I'm filming this at midnight because we had something going on today and I needed to film this at night. So anyways, thank you for watching. I will see you soon.